Hello and good morning, everyone. Hospitals running out of critical antibiotics. The problem is on the rise. A disturbing new report claims hospitals across the country ran short of 148 antibiotics. From 2001 to 2013, the average time without a drug was close to nine months. So how concerned should we be? Let's ask the host of Fox News Channel's Sunday House Call and Fox News Medical Aid Team's Dr. David Samadhi. Good morning, Dr. Good Samadhi. Morning. Good to see you. Um, this is a really, unfortunately, a frightening story for a lot of uh, Americans, especially one study that says in 2010 that 20% of patients have been adversely affected by the result of these shortages. So vancomycin, people may have heard of that, doxycycline, others. Why is there a shortage and what can we do in American hospitals to make this better? Because obviously it's unacceptable. It is obviously a big concern in all the hospitals for doctors and for patients. I think the statistic that you mentioned, 148 uh, antibiotics over the last 13 years, we can deal with this. That's not good news, but we can deal with this. The last five years has been really bad, but the number, the statistic that you just mentioned, the 20% of the time, it actually had a real adverse effect on the outcome of the patient, and that's a big deal, and we have to be very careful about this. Part of the problem is that the bugs, the super bugs are getting smarter. They're getting smarter than us because we overused antibiotics for over the years. So you have MRSAs, you've heard of C. difficile, you have like CREs, these are getting resistant resistant to our antibiotics, and some of it is our fault because we are not making good antibiotics, guys. You know, the, there's not a lot of money in this business. The profit margin for these antibiotics and companies are not doing so well. So we haven't had a great ones coming in the pipeline. Peter, it takes about two to three billion dollars to make one of these antibiotics. It, it's a long process, and when they come, the companies are not going to profit from this. So that's a huge problem, and the federal, the government is... It, pumping more money so hopefully in the next few years we'll have a better outcome. And you mentioned that there are some things that we can do as patients as well. For example, not going to the hospital, not only does it clog lines if you're going for something that's, that's not a serious ailment, but you can also pick up something and, and get a serious illness while you're there. Anna, that's an ex excellent point because C. difficile is one of these nosocomial infections. You get these bugs from the hospital. So if you, you go to the hospital if you have a serious problem. Don't go there because you have some cough or sneezing. There are a lot of urgent cares for that. You go to the hospital for serious stuff. 29,000 people die from C. difficile and you want to be careful. When you're in the hospital, try to ask for a private room if you can. Hand wash is always is a good thing. Right. Ask your doctor, should I get this antibiotic? But that's expensive for a lot of people asking for a private room. And so when people go to a hospital, they expect that there's communication between the doctors, the nurses, and the pharmacy, right. and the people who are making these medicines. And we saw in the survey that there's no communication going on. So if I have pneumonia, if I have C. difficile, as, as you're talking about, if I have some terrible infection, and then the doctor says to me, there's no antibiotic, a first-line antibiotic to treat this, because the drug companies aren't making a profit, what do we do in this country to make that better? Well, that's a very important point, and it's a huge concern, and your point is well taken. We need to do a better job. We need to make sure that there is better communication between the hospitals and pharmacies and these manufacturers. Peter, sometimes the manufacturer makes only one antibiotics, and they can mm. run out really quickly. So they need to really beef it up, and we need to invest more in our antibiotics and protect the patients. The message to a lot of doctors is stop writing these antibiotics. That's not necessary, because when you need them, the patients are immune and they are resistant. Right, to but if somebody's coming bugs. down with a uh, just a small cough, they go to the doctor and say, "I want a Z-Pack. Give me a Z-Pack right now." And if they walk away without a prescription, they're mad at their doctor. But yeah. you know something? It's good to practice better medicine. We just need to. Well, you, you can't give up to the patient because they're going to be mad. Well, so. you've, exactly. laid, you've, you've laid it out well. So we can watch you and Dr. Siegel today on Sunday House Call Great at twelve thirty. I watch so it much. every week. Happy to see you. Thank, Thank you.